Hey, eighth grade, we are starting a new unit today on squares and square roots, and then we'll be moving into the Pythagorean theorem. Um, but today we are just going to take a look at what squares and square roots are. I know you all know what squares are, but we're going to kind of dig in a little bit more into how that ties into algebra. So this is the first time I'm doing a video like this for you guys. Um, it may or may not feel like Dora the Explorer sometimes when she's like, say, siete, and then she like pauses. It's probably going to feel like that because I'm going to ask questions um, and then pause as if I want you to answer because I'm going to kind of try to teach this as if I was in class with you and we we're sort of having um, a discussion. So um, just fair warning that... I am going to act like Dora the Explorer sometimes, and you're just going to get over it. So I want you to take a look at these numbers. So um, this is a bunch of different numbers. So we've got 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, and 100. There are more numbers that are in this family of numbers, but I want you to think for a minute about what all of these numbers have in common. What do all of these numbers have in common? And I'm not going to tell you um, right away right now, but as we dig into this, you're going to see um, in just a minute what they all have in common. So obviously, um, this shape should be very familiar to all of you. And um, what do you know about this shape? It is called a square. Um, and what is the most significant feature about a square? Obviously, we know that it has 90 degree angles in every corner. Um, but what is the most significant part of a square is that all four sides measure the same length. So if this side is seven inches, every other side of the square is seven inches. Um, that seems obvious, but I want to just remind you that that's the most important feature about a square is that all four sides have the same measure. So let's think about area. We know that area is usually length times width. And in a square, that I have here, um, the area of this square is 81. So if I tell you that the square's area, that's the shaded in green section, right? How can you find the side length, um, the measure of one of the sides, which would end up giving you the measure for all of the sides. But if I know the area is 81, what is the measurement of one of the sides on this square? Hopefully you're all yelling nine at your screen. So take a look at this. If you have um, an area of 81, so remember area is this entire shaded region. Um, area is a two-dimensional measurement. Um, and the area is 81. That's what that equation A equals 81 means. We can just say area is 81. Then we know that the side of um, one of the, the measure of one of the sides is nine. So here I'm using S to represent the side length. Um, I could label all of the other sides um, nine, and I would know that that nine times nine, um, two sides times each other would give me the area of 81. Hopefully this is not rocket science to any of us here. Here's what I just said. So side times side equals A. Um, usually we say length times width for um, area, but in a square, we know that all of the sides have the same measure. So doing length times width is going to like the length and the width are going to have the same measure. So um, I'm just replacing length and width with S and S. So instead of saying length times width, I'm saying S times S equals area. In this situation, 9 times 9 equals 81. So in now that we're in 8th grade world, we have some names for those two numbers that we were just looking at and the relationship between them. Notice that I said the relationship between them. Um, I'm going to be asking you to think a lot about, and I'm going too far. Oh, 
I'm just going to ask you to think a lot about relationship between numbers. Um, and so when we're looking at these two, the relationship between these is um, this. The larger number, the area, is called a perfect square. And we're going to get into um, imperfect squares later, but for now um, we're going to just talk about perfect squares. The side length of that perfect square is called the square root. So the square root is the number that was multiplied by itself to get the area. So we know that I could also label this side with a 9. 9 times 9 equals 81. So this number is called the square root. If I was to ask you what's the square root of 81, I'm asking you what number times itself is going to equal 81. Or if you're picturing this visual in your head, okay, what's the square root of 81 if I give you that square? It's just like that slide that I showed you two slides ago that was just the square with a label of 81 when I asked you what is the side length of this square. Um, finding the side length of a square and finding the square root is the same thing. So the side length and the square root, same thing. So let's go back to these numbers list that I had at the beginning. Um, you should now notice, so here's the number 81 that we were just dealing with. We know that 9 times 9 is 81. All of these numbers represent what we call perfect squares, which means there's a number that multiplied by itself will equal this number, each of these numbers here. So if you think back, let's start at the beginning. 1 times 1 equals 1. 2 times 2 equals 4. 3 times 3, 9. 4 times 4 equals 16. And so on and so forth, all the way up to 100, we know that 10 times 10 equals 100. So these numbers could all go in place of um, the 81 that we had in the middle of the squares in our last picture. These could all represent areas of a square, and then we would be able to find the square root or the side length of each of these numbers. So here's how this looks in algebra. So we use this symbol, and some of you, or a lot of you maybe, have already seen this symbol um, in, I don't know, math things, or you've I don't know, seen it on nerdy shows. If you're nerdy, I don't know where I was going with that. But um, this symbol is actually not a division sign. So it looks kind of like a division sign, but it's actually not. This is called a square root sign um, or a radical sign, which we won't call it a radical sign for the time being. We're just going to, I'm going to let you call it a square root sign. So if I was... Um, to say this out loud, so that's not a division sign, okay? Um, it means find the square root of whatever the number is inside the square root sign. So in this situation, it's telling you to find the square root of x or find the side length of this number that's in here. If I put 81 here, Oh, let's, or 49. Let's do 49. If I have 49 underneath a radical sign, this means find, um, well, the way that we say this is I would say this is the square root of 49. So say the square root of 49. That's how we say it if you're reading it. But you're thinking in your head the side length of a square that has an area of 49. So if I was to put 49 inside a perfect square, right? You're thinking to yourself, what is the side length of that square? You know that that is equal to 7. And this pointer doesn't actually let me write, so you just have to imagine that I said equals 7 there. We're going to do more of these. So the square root of 49 is 7. Um, how do we say this based on what you just saw on the last slide? Hopefully you said the square root of 36. So when we are seeing these two things in algebra, um, I know that I can find the area of a 
square by doing side times side. Oh no, oh no, oh no, here we go. Um, I can find the area of a square by doing side times side or side squared or side to the second power. All those things that I'm saying side squared and side to the second power are the same thing. Area equals side squared. Um, and the square root of, remember, because we say, the way that we say this is the square root of whatever is underneath the sign. Square root of A, in this case, is always just going to be the side by itself. Let's take a look at some more um, with actual numbers to get you more familiar with this. So I want you to find the square root of each of these numbers underneath the radical sign. So we say this, the square root of 81, this is the square root of 25, square root of 64. And the directions here are, place them on the number line least to greatest. 